Where is Octavio? Let's uh, let's get this started. Have everyone come on up. Where is the filmmaker? Oh, I'm sure he'll get here in a second. <laughs> filmmaker. Oh, there he is. Yes! There he is. Everyone give a, a round of applause for the director. A round of applause for the director. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on up this way, and I'll have you introduce all uh, everyone else that's going to be on stage. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, very glad you for sharing this film for the first time. I think it's an amazing opportunity to be here with you guys. And uh, I want to call the band here. You know, they're right here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. great. Started. So after their father died, the, they decided to come back to the to Belo Horizonte, the, uh, her hometown, and she took care of the kid by herself, basically, you know, and uh, and she let uh, them do whatever they want. It was crazy, crazy. <laughs> exactly, whatever they want, they, they want to do it. And, I mean, and, it, and the, the house was kind of chaotic, but that's what we wanted to have, you know, freedom to do whatever we wanted. And so their room was like, oh, like uh, with paintings and posters and uh, they always thought about music all the time. And Vanya was very welcome to all the friends that came from different cities to, to visit Sepultura, to go to the practice and to see shows. Between Sao Paulo, Rio and Belo Horizonte was um, a very strong underground scene, you know, a lot of fans uh, that listened to all the music from Europe and the States, and we started to have our own bands, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and in 86, right, uh, Sepultura played with Venom and Exciter in Brazil, and I think uh, was the record hold for the Max and Igor's house was how many people was living there? Uh, let's see. Around, around, around 100 people. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was people all over the place, in the bathroom, in the, <laughs> in the living room, in the... In the kitchen, you know, the backyard, every, every, everywhere, and uh, she took, you know, everybody home, you know, so... Uh, and their house used to be the motel, the motel in my house was the rehearsal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I have to, to, to add as well, as you saw in the movie, you know, Paulo's family was very important, my family as well, um, you know, to, for us to be here, and I believe for Igor and, and Derek it was the same, you know, without our families, I mean, our musical career, I arrived here. <laughs> Eloy, thanks, Jim. <laughs> Four letters, got them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Eloy's family. And uh, uh, crucial, you know, fundamental for us to be here because, uh, you know, they were very supportive in the, throughout the, the very beginning, you know, since the start. And, you know, that's why we're here today. And, I mean, um, you know, and they still, I, I guess, very proud of what we did, you know, so it's good. Um, set the scene a little bit more for what Brazil in the early 80s was actually like, culturally, politically, musically. What was it like growing up there? Well, the uh, early 80s, Brazil was going through uh, a big change, political change. Uh, 
you know, uh, in the 1979 was the amnesty, you know, for the politicians who were, you know, exiled, um, and they all started came back to Brazil, um, and then started to to fall all the dictatorship that started in 1964 in Brazil. And 1985 or 84, the end of 84 was uh, where Sepultura started, and uh, and was at the same time that Rock in Rio uh, uh, happened in Brazil for the first time, January 1985, and uh, for the first time we could see those bands, you know, live, uh, very close to us, Ozzy, Iron Maiden, uh, uh, Scorpions, and White Snake, so many bands that we already dreamed, you know, to see, and that was a big impact uh, uh, for us as well. So. Uh, I think uh, we were lucky to, to be uh, our age, you know, to be living during those days, to feel that kind of uh, freedom, really, you know, uh, rock and roll and music. Uh, rock and roll was not only important for international bands, but uh, mostly for Brazilian, the rock scene, you know, like Paralamas do Sucesso, Barão Vermelho, and so many other bands that are still great in Brazil today, you know, it started right there, you know, in that uh, open, uh, the gates of you know freedom, really, you know, to to express and to do whatever we we might think and talk about different topics and lyrics and everything, you know, without being concerned of censorship and everything. So Sepultura started on that beautiful uh, dawn, you know, of a, of a, a new beginning for for Brazil. Unfortunately, you know, all those bastards that were exiled, you know, are the corruption, the corrupted guys today, you know, so uh, I don't know if it was really a good idea to make them coming back to Brazil, but we're dealing, we're dealing now with all the consequences of that time, you know. Uh, uh, it's really a, a very uh, weird situation in Brazil right now politically, but uh, yeah, that's the same kind of people that came back now, uh, then, you know, in 85. But it was great, I mean, for us it was perfect because, you know, we could really explore and do the music we wanted to do without concerning of censorship or any politics like that. No? And uh, when Sepultura was just starting out, was there even a metal scene in Brazil? Like, what, what kinds of bands were, uh, were around to play with? Was it mostly punk or, yeah? Were there other metal bands? In yeah, it was, a, it was a few bands, you know, like, a, like I said, Sao Paulo, Rio, Belo Horizonte, uh, they have, um, we have a lot of underground bands, Sepultura, Dorsal Atlantica, Volcano, and all the bands that we mentioned, especially in Belo Horizonte, Sarcófago, Chacal, Holocausto. So it was a lot of uh, young guys uh, playing and, you know, helping each other, really, with them using the same equipment. When I joined Sepultura, I used, you know, the equipment for the, the guys from Mutilator and using even the guitar from Jairo, you know, the, the old guitar player and stuff. So it was really, uh, it was really special, you know, like Gordo was saying in the movie, you know, it was really uh, organized in a way. You could see it was chaotic, you know, but somehow it was organized, you know, it was very focused. Uh, since I joined the band, you know, we practiced every day and even before, you know, like really practicing a lot. We did not, we didn't do any anything else. Of course, we tried to go to school in the morning. At least I did, you know, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul as well, yeah. Uh, but, uh, and the band started to happen, you know, so uh, really quickly, actually, you know, because uh, 87, I, jo I joined the band, start, the band started in 85, and already 89, we had an international contract and stuff, and touring around the world. So, uh, yeah, it was a lot of stuff going on, and, in, and a lot of people uh, wishing for their dream, you know, to be in a band and, and be successful and stuff, and it was very, very healthy, you know, it was really cool. There's so much documentation Luckily, you were on video and tons of photographs, and every era of the band is very well documented. It must have made your job easier. Yeah, uh, actually, we have to do a um, huge research, right? There was a lot of material, and uh, it's sad because if you guys saw in the film, you have to cut the audio sometimes, because you couldn't be able to play the whole songs, because uh, uh, the, the band, the, the the former members of the band didn't want it to be on the film, so we have problems to show uh, the, the actual formation of the band playing the old songs on this film. That's why we kind of bring the poem down as a protest, because we could, we, we, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's the actual Sepultura playing the classics, and actually, at the end of the film, I love to end the film with the whole roots 
song because there was a great moment in the 30 years show of the band. It was very emotional. And uh, you can see the, you could see the crowd embracing the band at the moment. I said, wow, that's a great, great finale. But I, I'm not going to be able to show that for now, you know. But I, I'll keep a try and to make this film to be as a, we dream do because we shot this film during seven years. You know, it's seven years of our lives involved in this film and trying to do our best and researching and recording. I travel with these guys all over the world. You could see Indonesia, you could see Europe, everywhere. So it's sad because we invited them since the beginning of the film because that's a film about Sepultura. At the same time that we talked to the band, we, we talked to them and they refused to be on this film. So. Just to complete what he was saying, um, yes, we did have a lot of footage. Uh, we had eight hour, 800 hours of footage that we shot. And we did have a lot of old footage. They recorded a lot. Um, and we have a lot more. We wish we had the time to show, of course, everything. And some of the things that, you know, of course, we want to show, we couldn't show because of legal reasons. But uh, we do have a lot coming up later on. Uh, for the extras, we, you know, of course, DVD comes out and all this stuff, but um, I guess it, it. It, it seems like there's a, you shot a lot of concert footage, so there, did you manage to get like whole shows? And uh, would you release Oh yeah, the Sao Paulo concert, you have the whole concert, it was like two hours of a historical concert? Yeah, almost. Yeah, the, the show we did in Sao Paulo for the 30 year anniversary, 2015. Yeah. I'm still touring for the mediator and um, and I think it's a, uh, you know, uh, it's it's um, it's kind of sad that Max and Igor didn't want to be a part more, uh, you know, showing what they're doing today and stuff, you know, like the development of his ideas, their ideas and different projects. I have my project, Derek has his project, and, you know, Eloy and Paulo as well. And, you know, we, we would love to explore a little more even of that legacy, you know, including our kids, you know. Uh, my son is playing guitar, and, and I know Max son as well, you know, play music and instruments and stuff, and show that legacy, you know, that influence, not only professionally and, uh, with music, but also as a family, as a father, you know. But, I mean, it's their choice, I respect that, I don't agree with that, but I respect that, and uh, uh, I think the idea here is the movie is, is to show a little bit of this uh, trajectory and, and understand a little bit why we're still here, you know, after so many years, with a great label, with a great uh, following of fans and great lineup and and all the, the crew and the and managers and lawyers and you know all that stuff that uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately we need <laughs> to be you know successful and, and do the stuff that we have to do and um, and I, I think it, it is I mean we you know we don't want to attack no one you know I, I think the the idea of the movie was not really to try to resolve for once and for all who is right or who is wrong because that's not the point, you know. We're never going to get to, into an agreement, you know. We have different point of view about the same uh, uh, action or the same uh, object, whatever, you know. So uh, we try to respect that and just show the facts, you know, what happened. And um, very important people that were a part of our history that uh, wanted to be a part of this and I have to thank all of them, you know, all the musicians and roadies and managers that were a part of Sepultura, they were very important for us to be here today. And um, we love them all, you know, we love even the haters, you know. I love the haters, they are part of it. <laughs> and uh, I, I was wondering what it was like for you guys to go on tour, perform, and have a camera there to capture all of it. Like, what was that process like for you guys? Um, did you feel ever like you wanted to not have certain things on camera? What was that relationship like? I mean, I think everybody was really got used to it pretty quickly. Um, it's a job of a really good director or filmmaker. I mean, they really just have to be able to find, you know, that right opportunity to, to shoot and capture those moments. But the best moments when, you know, people aren't aware of what's going on or being recorded. And um, I think everybody got, I mean, except for Paolo, maybe everybody got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool because Otavio became a, a friend, you know, like um, 
He was a Duran Duran fan before, and now he loves metal. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Actually, uh, I tried to and spend so much time with these guys to do a cinema verite documentary style when they forgot they were there, like in the bus scene with, with the Chan, they were talking on, on the beginning. They didn't see there was their recording. I did. You know, and, yeah. Paul was the only one. Paul was a great actor there. Yeah, he didn't the, say anything. Yeah, I was in the corridor of the bus, and Paul was right in front of me. But the, the, the three of them, they couldn't see me. So I, I think it's one of my favorite moments in the film because there was very natural, and I, and I was there, and I could see what was going on. And at the same time, you can't intervene. And I, you know, what I'm saying I could see like Jean going away. It was really a sad moment, you know. But uh, that, that's how the commercial filmmaking is. I thought it was we're going to be done in one year and a half. That was my plan. And then seven years. <laughs> seven is the magic number. Yeah, seven years. And I was always coming to the with more footage. So I said we have almost 1,000 hours of footage. You know, you know, you even have more hard drivers for that. You know, terabytes. You know, extra extra terabytes of the craziness. And, uh, but I'm really glad that we, we finally showing that to you guys today. It's, it's a pleasure. And I'd like to thank the Odois uh, Ochoa distributor. Igor is here. Yeah. They did a great job. Great <laughs> this film to Los Angeles. And the Alamo Draft House, thank you so much. And the Regent for being the opportunity for us to be here sharing this work with you. You know, That's the first time that I share the audience. So I'm really glad. That I can see a great people here. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just finished a tour yesterday, come on man. <laughs> You're all tired, right? Uh, one of my favorite rock movies of all time is Some Kind of Monster about Metallica. Did you, did any of the band worry that it would get that personal or that honest at the outset? I'm sorry, I did. Well, were you worried? at all at any point that the movie would show too much of behind the scenes. Like, some kind of monster shows a lot of behind the scenes. Yeah, the better actors than we are. <laughs> so, and it seems they love the camera, you know, and we don't, so... Uh, we're always running away from Otavio, so it was a hard job for him. Like, we're talking serious, oh, Otavio's gone, shut up. <laughs> it was always 